What's up, YouTube? It's Tempest. Um, <clears throat> I got a new microphone over break, so hopefully this video will be better quality than my other ones. Um, I'm going to do a sort of a not really an update for anything. This is actually uh, just a pretty good, helpful hint video for anybody getting into the game. Um, this is my Bermuda Triangle deck that is pure budget, and I designed it to be ideally the best kind of deck to make it tournament level com uh, playable um, while still maintaining the lowest possible cost for the deck. Um, so basically this deck only runs rares and uh, super rares or the R's and double R's. Um, I'll just get into it so you can see it's nothing out of the ordinary for Bermuda Triangle but it's it's just actually really good the way I have it. I'll, I'll just get right to it so you can actually see. Um, Starting Weddell, obviously it's best starter for the deck. Um, this is a reindeer build, so you're going to want to have her to bounce stuff in early on. Um, for my trigger lineup, I got four Cooking Caspi. Oh, no, sorry, not Cooking Caspi. Oh, this is Comical Rainy. That's a critical trigger. Four Drive Quartet Shuplu, also a critical trigger. Two Cooking Caspi, this one's the draw trigger. Two Bubblin, and four uh, Drive Quartet Flows for heal trigger. Oops. So um, obviously you have the 8 crit, 4 draw, 4 heal here. Um, the way this deck works is for the trigger lineup, you have uh, Drive Quartet, Bublin, Flows, and Shuplu. Um, while, let me see here. While Shuplu is in play, Flows will gain 3,000 power. While Bublin is in play, Shuplu will gain 3,000 power. So in the event that you don't have any grade 1 boosters, you can call three of these out, or like two of these, or like these two, or these three, or these two. Um, you shouldn't call these two together because there won't be any boosts. You should call these two together, or let me do it like this. These two go together, or these two go together, or you play all three of these, and then these two both get boosts. Um, but that's the trigger rush kind of thing, um, 7k booster. So don't you don't normally need to do that. Um, normally you just use these to guard with. Um, because they're obviously 10, 10, 5k shields, so, um, but really, yeah, you don't need the triggers at all. I mean, you need the triggers, obviously, but you don't need them to attack with at all, as you, you know, you, you hit come to a point where you need it. Okay, so anyway, triggers don't earn you any money. If you buy a box, you pull them. Um, grid 1s, 4, 8k Sedna, um, 4 Mertoa, 7k booster, standard. When she's put into play, each player is may draw one card. Um, I put her at 4 because um, I like to draw. If my opponent isn't aware of her effect, I don't have to tell them. When I'm playing as a beginner, I like to tell them the first time so they know. Um, if they miss their timing, then they won't be able to do it. I'll, 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 call, the, uh, I'll call it on them. But, you know, it's, it's just good for the draw power, personally. I like it. Um, 2 Tyrannia. This is the key card of the deck. I'll get back to that. And then four perfect cards. I don't have these at the moment. They're proxied, um, but these are you know not hard to get really. All right. So um, triggers, like I said, nothing nothing uh, common there. Perfect cards run between fifteen and twenty dollars each. Um, a playset shouldn't cost you any more than seventy to eighty bucks maximum, I would think. Um, you know, so these are going to be the most expensive cards in your budget deck. You know, if you want to play at tournament level, you need to have perfect cards. So obviously, this is going to be the core of your deck right here. Um, Tyrannia at two. Now, this is um, I only have two of her at the moment. I'd rather run three. Um, she's only a 5k booster, but her effect is very good. If her boosted attack hits a vanguard, um, so like if she boosts a unit in the front row that attacks a vanguard, um, then you can soul blast two if the attack hits, and then you can bounce one of your rear guards. So this is very important. It puts a little bit of pressure behind some of your attacks and forces your opponent to guard some of the harder ones. Um, like I said, she's only a 5k booster, um, but it's not really a problem with this grade 2 lineup that I'll get into really soon. Um, I'd like to run her at 3 personally. Um, right now it's 2 of her and 4 Sedna, um, but if I had the chance, I would probably run 3 and 3. Um, I was running Feluca, which is a when it's called 7k booster, and then when it's called you can soul charge 1. Um, but personally, this deck doesn't need the extra soul charging um, because with a starting Weddle, you soul charge it, you bounce a Rio, and that lets you counter blast one, soul charge one, and draw one card. So you don't need a soul blast for a Tyranny, you don't need a soul blast with anything else in the deck. You just basically can maintain your soul. Normally, you just, with a soul blast two to bounce Rio or carrying that just soul charges one, you know, it's a net soul blast one for everything. It's, it's not really, I don't think that extra soul charging is really needed. So just the straight up 8Ks are good. Um, and then obviously former Toa, you can run it at 3 if you want, but I prefer it at 4 because of the draw power. Um, yeah, 3 Tyranny would be, would be optimal, but you know, 2 is fine. I have only have 2 at the moment, so. 
All right, so on to grade twos, um, we have the four aquas, 10k beater. Um, you know, you need that. Um, it's also a rare. Um, four mermaid idol flute. Um, she's an 8k. If you have four more Bermuda Triangle rear guard, she's an 11k. Um, and then finally, two girls rock Rio. So the grade one and grade two lineup kind of synergize with each other. Um, in this deck, without you know Lena or Pacifica to bounce stuff back to your hand, Tyrannia is one of your main bouncers. Um, depending on what your opponent has for a Vanguard, if they have a 10k Vanguard, you team her up with Aqua and whatever's behind your Vanguard. If they have an 11k Vanguard, you play Flute. Make sure you have four more rear guards and team her up with uh, Flute. And then, um, so this column swings to 15 and 16, plus of the pressure from Tyrannia. If your opponent lets it go through, you can Soul Blast 2 and then bounce Rio back to your hand. And then Rio's effect is, if she's returned to the hand, you can Counter Blast 1 to Soul Charge 1 and draw 1 card. Um, now, I only have her at 2 because you only really need her at 2. Um, there's also a grade 3 insect that does the exact same thing that Rio does. Um, Rio just has an intercepting ability, which is why I wreck it at 2. Um, wow, I sounded Japanese there for a minute. Um, Rio isn't any more than 10, a lot of places, probably 5 to 7 or 8, I would say. I value mine at 8. I have no idea how much it's worth nowadays. Um, but really, like I said, these are the last two actual double R's you need. So, um, yeah. 10 grade 2's, um, you don't really need that many grade 2's with all the draw power you do from a grade 1 ride between the former Toas. And, um, yeah, you should be able to get your grade 2, and if not, you can always stall to it because this deck has a lot of draw power. And then grade 3's, this is the most important for Velvet Voice Reindeer. It's a budget deck, so we're going to run the best grade 3, that's a common. Um, her effect is, if you drive check a grade 3, choose one of Bermuda Triangles, return it to your hand, and then call out another one. Um, you are allowed to call the same one that you return to your hand, um, which is good because it comes out standing. Um, so during battle, you can basically turn your grade 3s into stand triggers and she drive checks. Um, you want her as your vanguard if you can. Um, next up, 3 carrying. Like I said, same effect as Rio. She's 10k. If she's returned to your hand, you can counter blast 1, soul charge 1, and draw 1 card. Um, with her at 3, you only really need the Rio at 2 um, because you'll be playing her more often. Um, and then finally, 2 Flores. Um, this is for when you run out of grade 3s to drive check with Reindeer or when you get low on them anyway. Or if you just can't ride Reindeer, you ride Flores instead. Um, her effect is on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle. When her attack hits, you Soul Blast 2 and uh, bounce when you Rearguard. So kind of like Tyrannia, but in grade 3 form. Um, uh, it's a really great card. Actually, this is my favorite card in the deck, but I don't need it at more than 2 because number 1, it's a rare. And uh, number 2, you know, Reindeer is just a better Vanguard. Okay, so just to review really fast, you got the starting Weddle. This might only run you a dollar or two at some places. Triggers are 25 cents a piece to the you know player who actually has them. I don't really care. You could probably buy a box and pull out all the triggers you need. Um, of four perfect guards, you know, max is going to be eighty dollars. Max, absolute max. You know, you can probably get them cheaper if you look online. I have no idea. Um, Tyrannia is probably only a dollar or two. Not many decks run her, but because it's the main bouncing engine of the deck, you're going to need it. Um, Four aquas, you know, you can get these for a dollar or two a piece. Flute, same thing, dollar or two a piece. Rio, mm, not sure about her. Between five and eight would be my guess. Um, Flores is two to three because she's a better card. And then reindeer is a dollar. Carrying is nothing basically because some decks run, some decks don't. So um, budget deck overall probably a hundred dollars to make with the perfect cards at maximum price of everything. Minimum price. Um, 70 or 80, which is still pretty good because that's same, still the same as the same cost as you buying two boxes. If you probably buy all the singles online plus shipping, you'll probably end up getting with a good deck. Um, so yeah, this deck doesn't run Pearl and Perla, which is what makes it better because Pearl and Perla are obviously double R's. Maybe it runs Tyrannia and Flute instead, and they basically do the same thing as Pearl and Perla. People will argue that Pearl and Perla are better for the deck because they're more draw power oriented, um, but this deck draws enough with Mertoa that it can pull off the same thing that another deck does um, and still put decent pressure on the opponent so I like it it's the absolute, absolutely the absolute most budget deck you can make for Bermuda Triangle so I hope you enjoyed it um, if you're looking for, to get into Vanguard this is a good deck to make um, thanks for watching please be sure to rate, comment, subscribe if you like this